As always, thank you for joining. Go and find your journey. Go embrace life. Jared's calling me. I wonder what he wants. What's up, man? Hey, uh, cool. Do you, you got a minute? Yeah, I was just recording a video. What's going on? All right, cool. Uh, I'll be quick. So, admittedly, I may have just bought a Canon C70. Dope, dope. Um, so problem is, I need some glass. Looking for some cinema lenses. You're the guy? You got any recommendations? Wait a minute, didn't you have the, uh, the Seven Artisans vision lenses? I did, um, but we don't have to talk about it. I don't, I don't have them anymore. Okay. Ah, uh, good cinema lenses. Um... You know what you should try? You should try the Miticon or like Zongi Optic cinema lenses. Those offer dope image. Dope image. Those are the uh, the T1s, yeah? Yes. You can shoot in the dark, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Anything that requires less lights is good for me. Less lights, less work. Less lights. I mean, you've seen my shots. I'm, they're all underexposed. So, you know, I get it. I like it. All right. Cool. Thanks a lot, man. All right, man. I hope that helped. Oh, no, you're all good. That was a trash video anyways. I got to record the whole thing over again. So, uh, but yeah, uh, talk to you again soon, man. Peace. Also, Tony says, hey. <clears throat> no, I, I'm on a call. I'm on a call. <clears throat> biggest fan. Bro, <clears throat> Tony says he's your biggest fan. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Jared, and in this video, we're going to discuss one of the only cinema lenses recommended to me by my friend Anson for the Canon RF mount, the Zongyi Miticon Speedmaster T1. But first, a quick disclaimer. I bought this lens with my own money. There's been no talk between me and Zhongyi or Miticon or whatever. As a C70 owner, I just wanted to make this video because it's one of the few cinema lenses available for the Canon RF mount that comes on the camera. Shout out to Anson for recommending it for me. Link to his channel down below in the description as well as right here. But let's get into it. I'm going to talk about the image coming out of this lens. I'm going to talk about the build quality of this lens. And then I'm going to give my final thoughts on whether or not I can recommend it to you. There is a plane going over my house. And this is the third time I've tried to record this video in like four days. Dope image. Dope image. So let's talk about image quality. There are a number of ways that I could show you the image coming out of this lens. But I wanted to use it in a practical sense. You see, I've done a ton of reviews during my time here on YouTube, mostly fishing related stuff that I was doing way back when. And in my time reviewing all that gear, it was very spec heavy stuff. And then I would go out and see whether or not I could catch a fish with it, which doesn't necessarily give you a feel for what it's supposed to be like to use that product. I like to think of fishing gear the same way that I think of camera gear. These are tools to do a job. So that being said, I went out to go shoot a thing with this lens, and I'm going to play that for you right now, and then we'll talk about it when that's all done. National Weather Service. 
There is a heat advisory in effect until 8 p.m. Nope. Welcome back. Let me know what you thought of that little skit clip down below in the comments. I kind of feel like this will be the process of reviewing things like lenses and cameras, maybe even lights, moving forward because it just feels like the most practical way to use a tool. So let's talk about the image and I'll throw up some clips from the short. Is it the sharpest lens? Nope. Does this lens do a great job at minimizing and handling chromatic aberrations? N no. Do you have to worry about things like ghosting with this lens? No. And that is something that I do have experience with and I think can make or break a lens. You can check out that video right here, which is the entire reason why you saw me and Anson talk about it in the beginning of the video. Didn't you have the, uh, the Seven Artisans vision lenses? But overall, I think the lens produces this beautiful, soft look. It almost reminds me of vintage glass. Now the color cast I found to be super accurate, but with uh, lenses, especially cinema lenses in this price point right here, sometimes <sighs> you gotta think about quality control. And this is something that I talked to Anson about off camera. Quality control really suffers at this price point. There just isn't the resources or the time put into the lenses to make sure that each copy is performing at its best. So there's a lot of variation between copies in my experience. Now, that being said, I do have a 1 8 black pro mist attached to the lens uh, in every shot that you see with it. And I still think that the lens is reasonably sharp, especially for a T1. Just slap down the internal NDs on the Canon C70 and called it a day because... That's kind of what we're after, right? Biggest reason to buy this lens, the biggest attraction of it, is the fact that it's a T1. You can shoot in the dark, buddy. As a solo run and gun style filmmaker, having a lens that can shoot in low light conditions is super important for things like time to set up lights, um, whether or not I need a light, or putting a light in a small space, or just stealing a shot without having to worry about getting good light and just being able to open up the lens and nail focus. And we'll get into whether or not that T1 is going to work for someone like you a little bit later in the recommendations overall thoughts towards the end of the video. But for now, we should probably talk about specs. And I waited to talk about specs because I don't necessarily think the specs should be the most important thing that you look at when buying a lens. I think image should be the thing that you look at. So order of importance. I'm really bad at stuff like this, so I'm just gonna read the specs off of B&H. This is a 35 millimeter lens meant for APS-C crop cameras. Now, the sensor on the C70 is actually like a 1.45, I'll put it over here if I'm wrong. Uh, so it's not exactly your standard Canon 1.6 and it's not a 1.5. It's a little bit bigger and the image circle covers it just fine. The maximum aperture is a T1. The minimum aperture is a T16, not T22, but that's all right. That's achieved with nine diaphragm blades in the aperture, so you get really nice round bokeh. You do have your standard pitch gears here on the lens um, for your focus throw and for your aperture. Now your focus throw is only 161 degrees and your iris rotation is 64 degrees. There's obviously no electronic communications on this lens, and there is no image stabilization on this lens at all. It is a cinema lens. Most cinema lenses, this is what you're going to find. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. The front diameter of the lens is 80 millimeters, so it fits your standard matte boxes. Dog just getting up and moving. Your front filter thread is 77 millimeters, so if you're somebody that's coming from like Canon EF glass, um, potentially you may have some 77 millimeter filters kicking around. Now the overall length of the lens is 3.6 inches or 92 millimeters. And the weight of the lens is 1.4 pounds or 615 grams. And those are the specs. Let's talk about build quality. This is the second copy of this lens that I've bought. The first copy 
that came in literally fell apart. I take the lens out of the very nice display box. I start messing around with the focus because that's kind of what you do when you pick up a lens for no reason at all. And then the focus slipped and just stopped working. It just came loose and didn't work. It just fell apart and I couldn't figure out how to fix it. So I sent it back to Amazon and they sent me a new one and my new copy works great. The body is all metal and you do have those, uh, the standard pitch focus gears. You do have your standard matte box sizing. You do have a pretty standard filter thread size and the mount is solid. Doesn't wiggle at all. Doesn't leave me longing for like a locking mount or anything like that. It's overall pretty good. So we've talked about image and we've talked about build quality. Let's talk about my overall thoughts and recommendations. My feeling is that for what I do and my love for 35 millimeter lenses on APS-C bodies, this lens is the perfect spherical lens for me. And with the limited options for cinema lenses in the Canon RF mount, short of the nanomorphs that are coming out, which if you want to see a video on the Lawa nanomorphs, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. You'll get notified when I upload that video because I have the full set on pre-order. I'm going to jump straight to recommendation. I can't recommend this lens. Not in good faith anyway. Most filmmakers would buy a cinema lens because they intend on buying a set of cinema lenses. We've already kind of talked about quality control from lens to lens and whether or not they're going to match and whether or not you can have a good copy or a bad copy. As we've talked about, my first copy was a bad copy. But the bigger issue here is as of now, August of 2022, they only make the 35 millimeter for APS-C. They do have a set which I'll link down below in the description of three lenses in micro four thirds, but not for APS-C. They only have the 35 millimeter. And as far as I know, you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. There hasn't been an announcement for any other lenses from Zhang Yi Medicon. I'd imagine that this lens is modeled after one of their stills lenses, which is interesting because they do have a 50 millimeter. Stills F.95, which would be like a T1. I'm not sure if the math is correct on that, but again, quality control, price point. I can't say go out and buy, spend your hard earned money on the 35 millimeter, not knowing whether or not we're ever going to see a 24, a 50, an 85, whatever. So, purely because it's a cinema lens, I won't recommend it. What I will say is if you love that 35 millimeter look and you have a need for a 35 millimeter cinema lens without matching it, I'm talking Greg Frazier killing him softly, shooting the entire thing on a 50 millimeter. If you want to shoot only on 35 millimeter, which I did for something, then yeah, go out and get yourself sweet lens. I think in the 35 millimeter cinema lenses that I've tested for New mirrorless APS-C bodies. Say that 10 times fast. New mirrorless APS-C bodies. This is likely the best one that I've tested, which only highlights the fact that we're missing a whole set. And those are my thoughts on the Zhang Yi Miticon 35mm T1 Speedmaster lens. Special shout out not only for the recommendation from Anson and Tony, but also for the clips and for the work on the collaboration in the video. And to the rest of you, my name is Jared. I hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Walter. Walter. Smell you later, alligator.